It's always a joy and a blessing of the Lord to be with you. We thank God that you still view us and we pray that you will continue, you will invite a friend all over this beautiful land of Guyana, in the Caribbean and for the field. We take this time to welcome you and say God bless you as you stay tuned. Invite a friend. God bless you. Thank you, Elder Bojdat. Last week we looked at the Demerara Harbor Bridge. This week we will look at our second floating bridge, which is located near New Amsterdam, right in Guyana. And it's the sixth longest floating bridge in the world. I love this. The bridge span the, spans the Borbis River, the second largest in our country. The bridge was completed in 2008. The length is 1,571 meters. On behalf of the set of choices, we say, God bless Guyana. Last week, we, we noted that we need a rescue plan um, for the family, and we cited that in light of the uh, deteriorating values and instability that we see existing in families today. And uh, we said that we really need to have a plan, a plan of action that will ensure that families um, and society, our society in particular, you know, return to those days when we saw our standards, um, when we were in our glory. And central to this plan, as we saw in, in Luke chapter 15, when we examined the story of the, the lost son, is love. And Jesus is the fulfillment of this love. And uh, this love is calling, you know, uh, it, it is calling all. Um, this love that we're talking about, it, it negates the, the sponsorship of wrongdoing in the name of rights, you know. Sometimes we sponsor wrongdoing and say that these are the rights of people. But these rights, you know, if we're not mindful, will ultimately destroy us and destroy the society. And so Jesus is the epitome of this love. Then there's a place for forgiveness. All of us, you know, we should have an, another chance or chances. Just reflect on your own life and see how many times you would have done things wrong. Why, whether you, you did it, you acted it out or it is in your thought. But um, God still persevered with you. And so there must be a willingness to, to give people another chance. And then the sharing of knowledge information. We have been doing this for years, trying to show people the consequences of their actions and... Um, we talked about fatherlessness and, and we, we have shown persons how you know family can fall apart. And then in this plan there must be a place of obedience. When Christ calls, people must be able to respond. They must but they must obey because you know it is better than sacrifice, you know. It's no point you go and, and, and damage yourself and then you want to bring an offering. So you, you, you should obey and this is critical to this plan. So we want for us to know, dear, that, that the man Jesus is available to, to make that impartation that will make you a person that, that will fit into society and also be prosperous even as you lead your family, gentlemen. You know what I like about the whole concept of the rescue plan? I like the two components really. On one part, the willingness to forgive, and on the other part, the person who would have erred, the person who would have um, gone his or her own way, their determination that they apply to the situation in which they find themselves um, requires them to return um, to the place of love. And Pastor, let me put it beautifully when you talk about um, the plan that Jesus Christ has for all of us. But I want to refer to the, um, the scripture in Luke chapter 15 where after the son recognized that he had done terribly wrong and he wanted to return home, when he got back home, this is what he said in verse 21, the son said to his father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. 
the father didn't view this as a point to feel elated or to, you know, that, you know, I have him where I wanted, he's on his knees now. But mm -hmm. this is the father's response. And the father said, because this is the son of mine, because this son of mine was dead, recognizing the position or the condition in which the son found himself, and is alive again, the fact that he's returned to the house, he's alive. And he said, you know, he was lost and is found. And he said, so they began to celebrate. This speaks about true forgiveness. Yeah. The fact that the young man mm -hmm. had returned to the house, it is time to celebrate. It is not time to labor on what he did, on what was done in the past. But the fact that he is here, it is, it's time to restart, to rebuild, and to really demonstrate true love. Because he was lost, now he's found. He's dead, he's now alive again. So this speaks, um, this is really the bottom line of, of forgiveness. Acceptance that we've done something wrong, and when we return to those who we've erred against, they willingly open their arms and allow us to come in and work with us again. That celebration caused a little corruption in the family with the elder brother. He was very annoyed because of what his brother did and then when his brother returned, what the father do for the brother, you know? It, let me see, in, in, tor, in the Torah uh, Force, 15, Torah four, tor 1, my son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have mm -hmm. in, your, in, yeah. in yours is yes. yours. yours. But we have to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and now is alive again. He was lost and is, and is found. You see, that's, that's showing you, you know, the brother, he, he was really off. He don't he didn't understand this, this family relation or else he would stay quiet and he would celebrate with his father and enjoy because his father was telling him everything that I have now is yours because your brother had the own but it's for father love. You know, I, 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 I like what, I like what the father, you know, um he even he, he took some time to, to explain what, what was really happening here. Um, and sometimes we feel like that, yeah. you know, because we're doing everything right and yeah. you, you might not be promoted, you might not be um, the next in line, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you become annoyed because somebody else comes from somewhere and, and apparently the attention is given to them. But we have to understand the context because, you know, Jesus talks about one as one sheep, I think it is, you know, yeah, that is lost. Yeah. This man was lost, and therefore, yeah. anything that is lost and has been found, there oh, must be a rejoicing. Yeah. Don't worry, yeah. you yeah. would yeah. have been around a long time and yeah. doing everything yeah. right. right. God bless you. Yeah. You understand me? And what is yours will be yours. But we have to understand this was someone, this was a life that went astray, a life that was yeah. dying. The man said he was dead. Yeah. Now he's alive. And so, when we find ourselves, and, and as human beings, you know, we must rejoice when we see people come from the doldrums and they, they rise up to a position where God recognizes them because this is how God wants us to behave, how he wants us to operate, not to be selfish, but to think holistically even as we embark on, on soul winning. It's a picture of God, you know, that all have sinned and come short yeah. of the glory of God. And if we really capture that concept, we will recognize that all of us, if we are not careful, we fall short so many times. And while the prodigal son or the lost son is under the microscope, and his father is also under the microscope, I hope you and I can put ourselves under the microscope and see where we stand in light of what is happening in this particular um, event. But I, I love the, the father for his his openness that even though his son went away, his son when he came to himself came back to him. And it tells me that fathers do have a role. Yeah. The fathers have a major role in the repair of their families. And um, even the son who 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 left, 
That's a potential father. That, that's a father who would have gone astray, but he has caught himself. But yet still after caught him, um, catching himself, what did he do? He just returned to his source. I pray we return to, to our source because John 3.16 is so powerful. Yeah. God so that's loved that's the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have. You know there will that be a time when you have to leave. But it depends on how you leave. The prodigal son, he left in an arrogant manner. He said to the father, give me. He know how the father get what he had. But he demanded it. But the father didn't hesitate. The father gave him. That's right. And he went. But I'm glad that he, he woke up. And he came to his senses. The Bible tells us about the woman with the last coin and the last sheep. They had to look for them because the coin and the sheep, because they had no sense. But God made human beings with senses. And he said he gave every man a free will to choose. And we're glad that he made his choice. And after he run brooks, he was awakened. And he recognized, I will arise and go to my father. I like that point because earlier... Pastor Hudson also made the reference to this whole concept of rights. Because a lot of us, we demand our rights. Notice um, this young man, he had his estate coming to him. And his father gave it to him. It was his right. <laughs> but what did he do? He went up there and he squandered, he squandered it. He abused, he abused the privileges, the freedoms he had. God has given us many rights. He's given us a choice, free will. He doesn't compel us to do anything. It doesn't mean that there aren't consequences. <laughs> he went out there, he squandered, his he squandered his rights. He squandered his estate. Then he recognized, oh, I'm in need. And what did he do? Did he return to his father? No, he didn't. He did like what so, much, so many of us do in, 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 in everyday life. We try other things. He tried many other things. And eventually, he still found himself in need. And then he came to that position where he said, you know what? I recognize that I've sinned against my father. Let me return to him. And that's the parallel that we face even now with our lives. And the only way we'll find that solution is when we return to the father. The so issue of reconciliation, yes. the issue of reconciliation is not one that is always easily addressed. Mm -hmm. And we saw it in this, this story here. Because we had a father who was longing for the return of his son. Mm -hmm. And we had a brother who was not pleased with the way his father reached out to his lost brother. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we can learn, we can draw from this that, you know, not everyone rejoices when, when we come to this place of recon, uh, recognizing that we have fallen short and we, we want to make it right by returning to our Heavenly Father. The Word of God is clear that heaven rejoices over every soul mm -hmm. that comes to repentance. And if heaven can rejoice, why can't we also rejoice with our brothers and our sisters who might be in a lost state, but have recognized that they have gone adrift and they have come to this place to recognize that they need Jesus Christ in their lives to help them to, 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 to live a, a purposeful life. There is a role for each and every one of us in reconciliation. And I think the Father dealt with it in a, in a mature manner by helping the older brother to understand that you know your attitude towards your brother can cause him to leave the home again. So you need to understand this situation, what your role is. We all need to understand our role in, in, in helping persons to be reconciled to their family, to God, to whatever they might have been separated from so that they can be better positioned to live purposefully. This parable helps us to understand that despite what we do or where we are, that our relationship with our Father mm -hmm. is the fundamental relationship of our lives. Yes. Despite what is happening around us, mm -hmm. despite who is celebrating with you, you might be celebrating with, with lots of people now because you have some money, mm -hmm. but the fundamental relationship is a relationship with your Father. And despite what struggles you are going through, when you are with your father, there might be people all around who will tell you or want to come against you. 
when you are with your father, everything is all right. You have to get with your father. Your father will prepare a place for you in the presence of your enemy. So you got to seek to establish this relationship with your father. Your father is God. And God has given his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So Seek your that father. you have to walk away from some of your so-called friends in order to reconnect with your father. If you don't make the decision like that prodigal son had to do, me feeding swines, wanting to eat the food of the swines, and you know that there is a better life in your father's house, why wait to become a person that indulges in pig food? No, you don't want that. You can get back to the food that God wants to give you, the bread of life. Life comes when you reconnect to your source of life. The Father is calling for every lost son, every prodigal son or daughter that is out there wanting to get back home but are considering who will accept me. God will accept you and as long as God accepts you, God opens the door for others to open their hearts to you. You know the word of God. The word of God, you know, it, it works in season and out of season every time. And uh, you know, even as we look, we look at this. You know, the, the phrase when it, it says um, he came to his senses. Um, clearly, one. What does it mean really to come to your senses? It means to realize that what you are doing is is not right. It is wrong. But the only way you could come to the realization of what is right and wrong is if you had some kind of foundation. Mm -hmm. And it tells me clearly that he must have had an impartation yes. yeah. by his father because yeah. that is when the spiritual awakening and you know lots of us we understand you know in addition to that God has given us something called conscience. Mm -hmm. You know and sometimes you, you, you know people say your, your conscience will deal with you. Mm -hmm. So he came to this realization because there must have been an impartation and, uh, you know, it, it is so important as fathers that we make that kind of impartation because sometimes, you know, like the prodigal son, the children might say, man, daddy, I gone, man, I will leave. Mm -hmm. I pack up and gone, your daughter. And then at some point in time, that word, that impartation that was made, that was made it comes right up to the fore. And then you say what, you know what? I better go home. And God is saying to each and every one of you, who might have had an experience with him, not only those who are coming now, but those who would have had an experience and you've, you've gone astray. Now is the time to wake up. Now is the time to come to your senses and come back home, including those who have not come home as yet. The Bible says that God is slow to anger, but he abounds in love. And you know, we look at the father. He, might have, he, might, he must have been angry when his son would have left. But you know what? He reached out in love to that son who returned home. The God that we are talking about, that we are promoting to you today, He abounds in love. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Today you might be out there and you're wondering where to turn to. He is ready. The Bible says He is the very present help in the time of trouble. You can come to Him. You can call upon Him. Anytime, anywhere, wherever you are, wherever you find yourself today, he is calling you. Come home. Come love home. covers a multitude of sin. The love of the Father, God the Father, covers a multitude yeah. of sins. And therefore, whatever, wherever we may be, whatever we will have done, going back to our source, yeah. God, our source, is beneficial because he's able not just to wash away but to repair. All of us sitting on this set, we can testify to you about some horrible things we would have done in life. But we have benefited from the love of the Father. Amen. And so you may even be a physical father who have not been very honorable. You have you have demonstrated fatherlessness, will have done a whole set of mad things that you yourself not don't even feel very um, honorable about. As a big man, you may feel as if you were like the prodigal son, a little boy. But 
The love of God is still available to bring that repair. Change is available. And therefore, I pray that you and I will take that, that offer that is before us. And let us recognize that, that while rights are, are available, rights require a level of responsibility. Yeah. So don't just fight for rights. Recognize that you must carry the necessary responsibility that accompany those rights. Well, it's part and parcel of this, um, this whole rescue plan, and what's critical to it, is the fact that in our impartation and our teaching um, of our children, um, they must know beyond a shadow of a doubt that even though they might commit themselves and do um, wrong things, yes, there might be punishment and all of that, but they must know that there is a place in our heart to forgive them. Yeah. And they must not question whether they can come and tell us or come and share, you know, their downfalls and some of the problems that they have. They, they mustn't question whether they come and say to daddy that they can, you know, I have done this. They must know that even if they would have done something wrong, they can come and there's a place in our hearts not only to forgive them, but to restore them. This young man was, was not only forgiven by his father, but he was restored. Yeah. He got a coat, he got a ring back which shows ownership, and that yeah. his father was prepared to accept him. This mm -hmm. is my son. You know, children are given to us, they are blessings from, from God. So we must treat them as such a they sin, the air they come back to us. Then no one does that's why I love the response of the father. If we can examine it a little bit more, look at the compassion that was shown at the return of the son. Look at the love that was displayed and the even while he was away, the father was still grieving and, and still praying for him. And then look after the son displayed such sincerity, look at the forgiveness that he received. And then at the end, the joy and the celebration. I even think of the response of the father to the other son. When he thought maybe he felt a little jealous or something like that, he would, and he started to make those remarks. The father responded to him in such a, a loving way. And, you know, so that he can understand the whole scenario, let him see the bigger picture. So fathers, we really have a responsibility to ensure that we display love at all times. Sometimes it's hard, but it is possible. Might I ask you a question? If you cannot establish and keep a good relationship with your father, your biological father, whom you can see, <laughs> how can you establish a relationship with God the Father, whom you cannot see. I no want to encourage you to put your hearts in a place where you can establish some relationship with your parents, both father and mother. Because, listen, the Bible says this is the first commandment with promise that you should honor your father and your mother. Work on those relationships. And you will see your lives begin to blossom as it should. But Pastor, you don't know the hurts that my parents caused me. You, you don't know how they treated me. You don't know how they spoke to me. You, you don't know that. So it's, it's hard. It's real hard. It's very hard for me to forgive my parents. Because they've done an awesome lot of things to me. But I want to say to you, if you've been hurt, there is a great physician. He can take away the words. Because what sense does it make? And you should know the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses. You would have trespassed. So your father is saying to you, this is how you will be forgiven. As you forgive others. No, no one knows that the father, he was hurt. You know why? Because the Bible said he was rich. And it's not five dollars, ten dollars. <laughs> you have to give him the loan. But well, you know something? The father was never distracted. Every day the Bible tells us that he looked up the road for this son. And I want to say to you young men outside there, you may have walked away from your physical father. You may have grew up in a, a Christian home. You are, and you walked away from your spiritual father as well. I want to say to you there is room at the cross. And I pray that you wake up out of your stupidity and enter into your senses and say, I have sinned against yeah. my father. 
and God, and I will return home. No, there's a place old, for you. There's old, old uh, sons who force me stand. As I look up the road and I wonder, <laughs> I wonder, I wonder. As I looked up the road and I wonder how far I was from God. So I buckled up my shoes and I started to run. I started to run. Started to run. I buckled up my shoes and I started to run. Way back home to God. It seems as if it, it, it is human tendency sometimes to run away from source. But when you catch yourself, you will run back to source. And so don't keep running. You might be involved in tech. Might be involved in murder, might be involved in illicit sex, might be involved in drugs, might be involved in all kinds of in all kinds of crime, might be involved in destroying your organization. You might you know what you're involved in. But you have discovered that sense of conviction inside you. Run back home. The scripture says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and the same is safe. We want to say to you out there that there is safety in the Lord Jesus. Um, you might believe that you were saved because somebody have, uh, you know, would have offered you some place of, um, of a boat, some kind of security, some money and so on. But these things, here what this comes to, everything that will be shaken will be shaken, but yeah. the word will remain. Yeah. So if you need safety, hold on to the word of the Lord. The book of Daniel also says that they that know their God shall be strong. And do exploits. So what is it we are saying today? We are saying that Jesus loves you with an everlasting love. And he's calling you back yes. home. With, with open arms, he's waiting for you. Yeah. Like the father waited for his son. Fathers, you need God to be able to execute that responsibility. Mothers, you need God also to enable you to execute that responsibility. Sons and daughters, you need him. Don't try to live your life without him. It's dangerous. The mistakes are humongous. They are going to be painful. Allow him to help. Once you allow him to help, even when you fall, he'll pick you up. Even when you make a mistake, he'll dust you off. The scripture is so clear. A righteous man falls seven times when he gets up back again. You can only do that in Christ. We invite you to come to Jesus. He's able to help you. God bless you. Jerusalem. Experience the wonder of the Holy Land and revitalize your spirit with thousands of believers and the world's top spirit-empowered pastors, leaders, scholars, and speakers at the Empowered 21 Global Congress, May 20th to the 25th, 2015. Celebrate Pentecost at Jerusalem 2015. Your life will never be the same. We thank you for being part of Choices. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly for any of our regular weekly services. I am Salisha on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.